Hello there and welcome to another Coffee with Callum and thank you for joining me. I put a call out on social media recently looking for some ideas, some topics that perhaps some of you out there might want me to cover in this Coffee with Callum series and a couple of people came back, several people came back and over the coming weeks and months uh, I'll explore some of those ideas. Uh, two of them had a certain amount of commonality and I've decided to put, to put them together in this week's Coffee with Callum and it's around hiring, firing, partnerships and everything in between. And uh, truthfully, uh, there are as many different ways of looking at hiring, firing partnerships and everything in between as there are, you know, colors in the rainbow. There are obviously myriad laws that need to be adhered to and they vary from country to country and state to state. But, uh, but essentially, uh, once you get into it, we're dealing with uh, human beings, we're dealing with all sorts of personalities and uh, there are many different ways of looking at the same set of circumstances. One of the people who uh, responded to me asked me to comment on, uh, on a junior partner partner coming into a business and whether that junior partner should in fact spend some time in the company and basically earn his or her stripes before they got to sit at the table in terms of making the bigger decisions and I was asked my opinion on that. And the second person had come across a phrase which basically said uh, hire slow and fire fast and he wanted to know what my thoughts were on that particular phrase. So one of the things that I'm known for is my, my reading. I read a lot, a lot of books. I've got this 10 a day program which I can recommend to you and it's basically Basically, read for 10 minutes or read 10 pages a day in a book that uh, will stretch your thinking. I'm reading two at the moment. The reason I'm reading two at the moment is because at times a book that I'm reading gets a little bit heavy and I need a little bit uh, of distraction if you like to keep the momentum going. So sometimes I flip flop between a number of books and I'm reading two at the moment. And as it happens, both have something to say on the two questions that have been posed uh, this week. The first book I'm reading is The Wealth of Nations by Adam Smith and it was published back in the 1770s of all things but Adam Smith is known as the father of modern economics and the second book uh, was published in 2017 and uh, it is a book called Principles of Life and Work by Ray Dalio. Ray Dalio heads up a company called Bridgewater. It's the world's largest hedge fund and very interesting even though those two books are centuries apart they touch on the same topics, uh, albeit from wildly different perspectives as you can imagine. Adam Smith's book, The Wealth of Nations, he talks about uh, back in the day uh, apprentices spent many years working under a master to learn their craft and then equally as many years working alongside the master to hone their craft before they were allowed to go out and do their own thing and uh, responding to that first person's question about uh, a junior partner what are my thoughts on that I think it makes perfect sense that uh, we apply those principles that somebody in fact would come in and work under the master under the, the person with the more experience for a certain amount of time and then alongside that person for a certain amount of time before they're al al allowed fly so uh, in fact, uh, I used the analogy, imagine if your Ryanair pilot had simply gotten up this morning and decided that he was sticking on a uniform and gone out and he was going to take uh, a flight from Dublin to wherever just because he felt like it. How comfortable would you feel sitting in seat 9C? Uh, I don't think very comfortable at all. So, you know, take for example, a pilot must go and study, study the principles, then, you know, uh, work under a master and then work alongside a master as a co-pilot, I expect, and then finally becomes captain and gets to fly solo. So imagine that principle and apply it into every other business type. And all of that to say that uh, everybody, the company included, would benefit from the uh, more experienced person offering their wisdom and uh, the less experienced person learning from that wisdom before they have in fact got a valid opinion of their own. Uh, you know, there are several different leadership styles in organizations. There's the autocratic le leadership style, which basically says, I know best, do this, do that, go here, say this, say that. Uh, and that I don't believe is a very effective business model. Democracy is another way of running a business. And of course, uh, democracy is a well-known way of running uh, countries um, where everybody has an equal vote. And uh, that seems to have worked in the main, but to be honest, at a personal level, I question uh, its infallibility based on recent events, based on Brexit and dare I say it, Donald Trump achieving the highest office in the world. Uh, but look, democracy has its place for sure, but it's not infallible. Uh, another idea that I came across, and this came from the second book, Ray Dalio's uh, Principles of Life and Work. Uh, in that book, he talks about the way he runs his company, a 1500 strong company uh, called Bridgewater. And they run it through a concept 
called meritocracy. And a meritocracy is where everybody has a say, but their viewpoint is believability weighted. Their viewpoint is believability weighted. And I love that phrase. And believability weighting is very simply, if somebody has more experience than somebody else, well then their opinion on the matter has a greater believability rating than the person with less experience. An example might be uh, if uh, Carambola needed to go talk to revenue or go talk to the banks, well then our finance director has a higher believability rating in that sphere than I have. The believability rating is exactly the opposite if we were to go and talk to a school principal or a school teacher or indeed a class full of kids where I'm the one with the higher believability rating. So I hope you can understand the principle uh, through that little example that I've just given you. So meritocracy is a very interesting concept in my opinion. We've got the autocratic style, we've got democracy and we've got meritocracy and of, of those three I think meritocracy carries validity in today's marketplace. On the question of hiring slow and firing fast there's this concept that I'm quite sure you've come across in the past where uh, for a business to work properly uh, the analogy is used of having the right people on the bus so we must have the wrong people off the bus the right people on the bus and then have them sitting in the right seats for the company and the business to to grow in its most efficient form and if that's the case well then we should do so as quickly as we can if somebody is underperforming in the early days or weeks or months of them joining your organization or indeed in a new job within your organization well then it's incumbent on you as the leader to uh, to find them another seat on the bus or find a bus stop that you can get them off at because that's best for them and best for the organization and it reminds me of the very early days in Carambola when we we started up and we were growing very rapidly and uh, I had taken a, a young lady to come work with us in our school lunch business and I'd invited her to come because she was a very hard worker in our cafe business. She joined us and she was one of our early uh, hires into, into Carambola and as we were growing very rapidly almost every day we were hiring new people and bringing in new systems we had to keep tweaking stuff just to stay afloat and keep up with, with the pace of growth and uh, the mistake that I made as the, as the owner and the manager was that I assumed because of her seniority in this new business that she would in fact be the uh, the leader the first leader in the business and we needed to set up our kitchen for sandwich production and it's also true to say that she also expected that she would be the first leader in our kitchen so that's the role we we hooshed her into if you like and uh, it worked for a day and it worked for two days and it worked for three days but very quickly the cracks began to appear and very very quickly uh, it became very apparent to me that I my involvement wasn't required or welcomed and that she would run her kitchen her way thank you very much and that began to pose a problem for us because we really were growing very fast and I was going I was having to uh, step in uh, often and take charge and to switch things around just literally to cope with the volume of business and she wasn't at all happy with this and it was becoming very frustrating between the two of us but here's the difference at that stage in my career I was already 20 plus years a quarter of a century nearly into my catering career and this lady was perhaps 20 months into a catering career so if you like in that sphere I was the master through experience and she was the apprentice but she didn't like being the apprentice she wanted to be the boss she wanted to be the master and I really did try my best I think to allow her her space and allow her get on with things and all of a sudden it got to a point where it just had to stop and I had to call it and I called it one day and I called her into my office and I said look this has to stop and it stops now and I said this isn't me as the business owner imposing something on you this is me as the person with the more, with more experience who knows the challenges that we're facing and I'm, I'm going to show you how we can run this kitchen properly and uh, it's going to change it's going to change now and it must change and it must change now and she wasn't happy at all and she simply walked out and for about 10 minutes I was a bit thrown but it was absolutely the right thing for her to do uh, and it was the right thing for the business and the business has thrived ever since and she has thrived ever since. Uh, my fault entirely, I shouldn't have let it get to that stage and we're back to that phrase, uh, should we hire slowly and fire quickly and the answer is absolutely. We should hire slowly, we should promote even more slowly and we should fire quickly. So to recap, whether you're looking to hire somebody for your business, promote somebody within your business, fire somebody from your business or indeed form a partnership, please tread carefully. Hire slowly, promote even more slowly, get into partnership even more slowly again and fire quickly if that's what's required because that's what's best for the business and if it's best for the business, it's best for everybody around the business including the person who ends up no longer in your business. And thank you for joining me for this week's Coffee with Column. I hope and trust as ever that you got something from it and I want to thank my two contributors for asking the questions that I hope I've been able to answer in this week's Coffee with Column. If you've enjoyed it and you think somebody else would benefit, I'd be delighted if you'd pass the link on. If it's your first time here 
and you'd like more of this type of stuff, well then pop to the homepage, colinobrianmotivation.com, leave me some details, and I'll make sure you get a link like this on a weekly basis. Uh, most importantly, please consider what's been shared here today and apply it into your thinking for this next week. And then equally as importantly, please come back next week and we'll share another coffee together and I'll ruminate on some other aspect of life and business. Between now and then, get some good coffee, get some fresh air, get some R&R. &R. If you spend a lot of time with people, I recommend you spend a little time alone. Converse, if you spend a lot of time alone, I recommend you go out and meet some people. And then when the time is right, and only when the time is right, get your head back in the game, get organized for the week ahead, get stuck in, make next week count, and I'll see you here this time next week for another Coffee with Column. Slaunter. Ah, I really love great coffee. Talk to you soon. Bye for now.